Hello Nuggets. Okay, so today I wanted to talk about um, just a couple of things that have been happening with me. Um, so it's a little bit about insomnia, it's a little bit about depression, it's a little bit about aging. Um, and I know that this uh, this song is getting a little bit boring. <laughs> but fuck it, this is my blog, right? So um, my insomnia, let's talk about the insomnia first because it's just crazy. It's crazy. I don't know what's happening with me. Um, well, I have an idea of what's happening with me, but my sleep pattern, I've always had problems with sleep, right? I've had periods where I sleep really well, or when I say really well, normally. But normal for me was, or good for me, was five and a half, six hours sleep a night. If I could sleep that, then I'm doing okay, you know? Um, and that would be getting to sleep about midnight, one o'clock in the morning, waking up at seven or six or seven. Um, that was a good night's sleep for me. Um when it's going well but it's been bad a lot on and off for my entire life and my current sleep pattern is chaos and i i just the, what's weird is that the tiredness has taken a different form now so invariably this is what happens i will get tired at about nine o'clock at night and, and uh, it will make sense in a minute why that happens. Seven between seven and nine o'clock at night. If we're watching television that night, I'll be on the couch and I'll be drifted off. Right. So then I'll want to go to bed. So I'll go to bed. My, uh, Laura goes to bed early anyway. She likes being in bed early. So we'll go to bed sometimes at like eight o'clock, seven thirty, nine o'clock, somewhere in there. Right. Really early. Uh, and I'll lie on the bed and I'll fall down and I'm really tired and I'll embrace sleep and. I'll kind of drift into this weird mid sleep where I'm awake, but I'm not, I'm asleep, but I'm not, I'm kind of in between in and out. I'm, I'm aware of the passage of time, but only at points where I bring my eyes, my mind snaps back and says, you've probably been here about half an hour, but you don't remember the last half an hour. And then you've probably been here an hour, but you don't remember the last half an hour. You know, it's like little increments. But what will happen is, let's say we go to bed because I'm passing out on the couch at like 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. I'll wake up at about an hour and a half later. Like, wake up, wake up. Like, I'm fully awake. Um, and then I'll be up and I cannot sleep. I've tried going back to sleep and I'm really uncomfortable and achy and hurting and just whatever. Uh, then I'll wake up and I'll be up till 3 or 4 in the morning. Um... And then I'll start feeling a little bit panicky and stressed out because I'm not, because I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired, but I'm not, I, I almost feel like I'm on drugs. That's what's weird. I almost feel like I'm on drugs. Um, like when I was a lot younger, I used to do a little bit of speed, right? Uh, meth, um, just powder. I, I wasn't like a tweaker, but uh, I remember distinctly the feeling of being awake all night on that but and you would be buzzed and high and jumping around but there was also this little bit after the high where you couldn't sleep but you weren't high you were just kind of just or the thousand yard stare that's kind of where i feel like at night with a headache so i have this slight headache going it's about one o'clock in the morning two o'clock in the morning a slight headache comes on it's not terrible um, I'll be sitting at my computer, so I've got this thing called Flux to deal with the blue light. <clears throat> it is the computer, I'm sure, that's part of it. But uh, I have this slight headache, and then I'll start feeling really guilty, and, and uh, not guilty, just panicky, about, oh my God, I've got to go to sleep. This is ridiculous. I've got to go to sleep, got to sleep. So I'll force myself to go to sleep. It's 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, um, and then I'll kind of toss and turn a little bit in bed, um, and eventually drift off half an hour later, and then I'll wake up at 7.30, 8 o'clock. So I'm basically getting about five hours sleep a night, um, but it's really fitful sleep, and five hours is a good night now. I've had, I had like a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> I had a period over the whole week where I was getting two and a half, three hours a night. And I was starting to freak out because I thought I was losing my mind. Like I was actually expecting myself to start hallucinating. And uh, it's driving me nuts. I spoke to the doctor about it. I had a virtual visit. Um, 
with the doctor and you know i love our doctor he's 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 very good and he's very high up at the hospital now and like he's he's a very well respected gp um he's a great guy dr clement yang wonderful doctor but his feedback was it was very basic and i you know it's not his job to get into my psychology but um you know it was are you drinking late at night is it that you get up to pee are you um eating late at night are you drinking caffeine too late are you exercising you know it's all of the standard stuff and a lot of that is true right but the problem is a lot of the rules i break that might make it hard to sleep at night i'm breaking because it's hard to sleep at night so i'll give an example don't eat late at night right so any diet you go it's just healthy don't eat late at night you shouldn't do that you should fast intermittent fasting is a really good thing right However, what do you do when you're up till four in the morning? Because that's a slightly different concept there. It's a lot easier to fast for 16 hours when you're asleep for eight of them. It's not so easy to fast for 16 hours when you're awake for most of them. So that's the problem I have is that I'll get hungry at 12 o'clock at night and I'm like, okay, I can't eat. I've got to fast, so I'm going to go to bed. So I'll go to bed. I'll drift off to sleep. I'll wake up again an hour and a half later. And then I'll be up for another four hours and I'm hungry through that whole four hours. So it's like, I don't quite know how to manage that. It would be, if I just slept through, it would be fine. I wouldn't be eating. I want to see, I'm not having a meal. I'm not like, you know, but I don't know. I might snack on a little something, um, some nuts or something, you know. Um, if we have sunflower seeds, I'll snack on sunflower seeds. Um but the, and and they're not unhealthy, but they are when you eat them at that time of night, you know. Um, so one of them is the food thing. I this is probably part of it. It's the fact that I eat eat late, eat late at night, but I'm not sure how to break that habit. Just simply because it's not really late at night for me. It's effectively the middle of the day, you know. Okay, so there's that. There's also the stress of the you know we don't have any money. We're not paying our mortgage right now. We're on the forbearance plan. And uh, I'm kind of worried about where we're going to go with this. I think we're going to have to downsize our life. Uh, I'm finding it a little hard to get a job, which is a uh, new territory for me. Um, and I'm not trying as hard as I should. <laughs> but but because I, I, I'm i bored of the job, you know. Um, or I'm bored of the industry a little bit. I'm tired of the industry. Going back into that grind worries me a little bit. Unless the job is right. There are some jobs that I would be fine with. But on the whole, it worries me a little bit. Um, so the stress, that's probably not helping me sleep. There's just my physical self, right? I've gained weight. It's amazing I've been saying that for 40 years. But I've gained weight um, again. Um, and I think I'm, I'm now so uncomfortable in my body. I have little aches and pains everywhere. I am lucky how healthy I am considering the state of me. Does that make sense? Like, the way I eat, the way I treat my body, and at 50 years old, I know a lot of people who are way worse off than I am. So I've been, I'm very lucky, I've been blessed. I wouldn't say I've been blessed, but I'm very fortunate that I haven't fallen into any of those pits. But I'm going to. I am aware of that, I'm going to. And I think the stress of that, the depression of like, you know, hating looking at yourself, not feeling comfortable, like, there's a lot of limitations it puts it puts i put on my life by choosing this lifestyle right a lot of things you can't do you know it's it's weird to think of you know you you look at the bucket list that a lot of people might have in life and a lot of those things i have to cross off because i'm fat it's my fault i'm not saying it's anyone else's fault but it's it's odd it's a real sign of what food addiction is i think a lot of people don't understand i'm not asking for sympathy but a lot of people don't understand about food addiction, and yet they do about drug addiction, and it's odd, right? Food addiction, think about what fat people, what choices fat people have made, what they've given up for food. It's pretty extraordinary, right? Because not only have you shortened your life by being a beast, not only are we choosing a shorter life, a food over a longer life, but we're also the quality of the life is drastically, drastically impaired. You can't do half of the shit that other people can do. I can't run for a bus. 
<laughs> not that I want to necessarily go for a bus, but I can't, you know. I can't go zip lining, you know. I can't go skydiving. I mean, I probably could do some of these things, but the, the self-conscious fear of it, you know, like it's it's weird to get a, I think I've said this before, but it's very odd to get a step stool out and then realize you exceed the safe working load. That's just, it's like a, and yet I still exceed it. I exceeded it, you know, a couple of years back. So, why was I talking about my weight? Oh, so the insomnia. So the, the, the body state is um, is pretty bad. But I think what everything boils down to is stress. Underneath all of that is stress. You know, in the periods of my life where I've lost weight, it's because I've been, I've had low stress. In the periods of my life where I've slept well, it's because I've had low stress. You know, in the periods of my life where I've written well or produced content works because I've had low stress. And I feel myself going down into this hole of stress now. No money, no jobs, not happy with this lifestyle. I'm really not happy with this lifestyle. Um, and just going down into this hole where I'm not sure how I get out of it. Um, oh, the other thing I'm doing. I think a lot of you will recognize this. Um, Laura, my wife calls it compare and despair, right? And it's one of the reasons I want to get out of LA and get out of this industry, being surrounded by the lifestyle that we have in LA. Um, just constantly comparing myself to what other people are doing and feeling like a loser, which is just, it's just awful. It's so depressing, right? It's just, it, it's, it's, it makes, it gives you some fucking dark thoughts, to be honest with you. Like the idea that it feels like you're constantly, I'm constantly watching people or looking at people who don't have the problems I do. And that's probably very narcissistic what's going on and um, or selfish or I don't know, I haven't thought about it too deeply because I don't want to, I think. But, but whatever ugly part of my nature that is, the truth is that I spend a lot of time looking at people and being jealous and being upset at their success, not necessarily feeling that I deserve it, because I don't, but maybe feeling frustrated that they seem to find the thing that they love and they just have done that for their whole life. And I have been changing careers and changing jobs my entire life. And it's I'm at an age now where that is so unsatisfying and so scary, really fucking scary. To be at 50 years old and really have no idea what you can do. <laughs> like When you're young, it's like, oh, Renaissance man. Or it's, oh, it's, it's interesting. But if you lose energy, if you lose drive and motivation, and you're also a jack of all trades, and you like to bounce about, there's going to come a point in your life where those two things cross. So you cross the streams, right? Oh, you got no motivation. You got no direction. Ooh, <laughs> that's where I'm at right now. And when that happens at 50, it's really fucking hard because your options are limited. And when it happens at 50 and you're also extremely unhealthy, your options are even further limited. And I feel the weight of this stuff stacking up on me, like this huge weight on my shoulders. Um, and that's depression. And that is stress. And that is insomnia, right? And weight gain and all of the other things. So I'm not quite sure how to get out of it I'll be honest with you don't really know what to do um, it's very hard uh, I keep coming up with these ideas and then I get into them and then I don't but then I look at my daily life and I feel like such a loser <laughs> I just feel like it's so pointless it's such a it's such a waste of time what I'm doing you know and I my wife's going through it too you know um, for her own reasons you know she's 50 in her 50s and she's <laughs> she's and she's uh she's in her 50s she's an actor and a female actor in the 50s that's a fucking hard business but you know she's working really hard she's writing songs she's an amazing songwriter as it turns out it's extraordinary she's an incredible songwriter um anyway so that was a ramble today but i need to get it out oh well so last night so the thing that woke me up last night after an hour and a half, like at 10.30 I woke up. I passed out at 9 o'clock, went to bed uh, with my wife. She fell asleep. I woke up at 10.30 and the thing that woke me up 
is that it's her birthday in two weeks time and we haven't got any money and there's a pandemic so we can't go anywhere so it's going to be a shitty birthday for her mine was shitty too and i think hers is going to be shitty too um but she wanted me to write a poem for her because i write poems for her every year or a lot like, i don't know a lot over the years and i woke up with an idea for the poem uh and then i started writing it and then i wrote for about four hours last night um and then I sat staring into space for an hour, figuring what the fuck am I going to do? And then I went to bed. But the poem was about, it was very interesting. It was a poem about hope for her. Um, but I think I was writing it to myself as well. Um, about what to do next. About courage. About finding your truth. Uh, that overused word, truth. Finding what's real in you. Um, anyway, that's why I couldn't sleep last night. So I wrote a poem. Maybe I'll publish a book of poetry. I do have a lot of poems. It's got to be 50, 40, 50 poems. I have a lot of poems. And I'm a good poet, I think. I don't know. I'm not I'm not going to win any prizes for it. But, <laughs> but maybe I'll self-publish. That would be cool. I can check it off the list. You know, It's something you could bring up in a conversation with someone, right? So what do you do? This, this, and this. Oh, well, I published a book of poetry. Really? Yeah. All right, let's move on. And then you never speak to it again. But I don't know. Maybe I'll do that. All right, little nuggets. Have a lovely day. Bye.